Do you see me? Yes, yes, we do. Okay. Good morning, everyone. And uh, welcome uh, to this uh, first uh, keynote lecture of the school that will be given by uh, Roberto Carr from uh, uh, Princeton. Roberto hardly needs an introduction to any uh, molecular simulation uh, uh, practitioner. And uh, I will uh, just say very few words about uh, his many uh, recognitions and uh, the awards uh, that uh, uh, he has uh, got all along his uh, uh, long and very productive uh, career. The, uh, Roberto, of course, uh, you all know uh, the uh, groundbreaking uh, work that uh, he did uh, in uh, Trieste in the winter 84 to 85 with uh, uh, Michele Parinello. And uh, the, uh, that work got immediately a, uh, a huge attention from uh, all over the world and started uh, uh, to, uh, to get them many prestigious prizes. The first of which, if I remember well, was uh, the, HP, uh, the HP prize of uh, the European Physical Society awarded uh, in uh, 1990. Uh, the two of them have got a number of other prestigious prizes, including the Dirac Medal of uh, uh, the ICTP, and, and many others. And uh, uh, Roberto was uh, elected as member of uh, the American Physical Society in uh, 2016. Uh, the last chain of this, uh, the, the last link of this uh, long chain uh, of uh, awards and uh, prizes has been uh, this year, uh, the Franklin Medal that is awarded yearly by the Franklin Institute in Philadelphia to uh, uh, scientists uh, and uh, entrepreneurs in, uh, in, uh, in the United States. Uh, the Franklin Medal is probably the most prestigious prize awarded, uh, scientific prize awarded uh, in uh, the USA. And the previous awardees include uh, the likes of uh, Albert Einstein, uh, Maria uh, Skłodowska Curie, and uh, Stephen Hawking, and many others. Uh, the late interests of uh, uh, the latest interest of uh, Roberto include uh, uh, the physics of water and other age bonded systems, uh, with uh, attention also of, uh, to the role of quantum effects. So these are very uh, time consuming uh, molecular simulations, uh, mu much more so. Uh, in the case uh, of uh, uh, quantum simulations, including uh, quantum effects on nuclei with uh, path integral molecular dynamics. And uh, this, I think, uh, is one of the reasons that uh, brought uh, uh, Roberto uh, in contact with uh, modern uh, machine learning techniques that allow to combine uh, the accuracy of uh, ab initio molecular dynamics that uh, he has pioneered uh, 35 years ago with uh, uh, the uh, economy that can be achieved uh, with uh, uh, classical fossils. Let me conclude uh, with uh, uh, this uh, presentation with uh, a few personal recollections of uh, about Roberto and the strong links that uh, have always tied him uh, to the Quantum Espresso project. Uh, the, the great work of, uh, of Carlo Parinello, as, uh, as I said, and all of you remember, uh, was done in the winter of uh, 84, 85, uh, when uh, Roberto uh, 
was fresh from the United States. He's, uh, he arrived uh, in uh, Trieste in the fall of 84, uh, coming from uh, uh, IBM uh, laboratories uh, in York Town Heights. And uh, amongst the many things, the many uh, uh, knowledge, uh, knowledges that uh, he brought back to Europe was uh, a, a plane wave code that was uh, pioneering in many ways at, the, at those times uh, that he brought back from uh, IBM, if I remember well. And the main uh, features of that code uh, were FFTs to do uh, convolutions, to do uh, uh, real space convolutions, which are one of the key uh, technical features of modern, uh, of modern plane wave based uh, codes and the very smart use uh, of symmetries. The, these two features still exist more or less uh, untouched in uh, the modern distribution uh, of uh, uh, of, uh, um, of quantum espresso. Shortly after, uh, Paolo Giannozzi and myself started uh, to work uh, on uh, more traditional uh, uh, self-consistent approaches to DFT and uh, combined ideas from Karen Parinello uh, with those uh, uh, more conventional approaches by uh, implementing uh, I think uh, it was the first at those times uh, uh, attempt uh, to avoid uh, uh, to avoid the matrix diagonalization and to replace them with uh, modern iterative techniques. And then uh, uh, density functional perturbation theory uh, came, and soon after, uh, the many students that uh, passed uh, from uh, uh, Trieste uh, were con continuing their scientific journey taking back home uh, or to other destinations, their own versions of the code, uh, of the codes that they brought, uh, uh, that, that they brought back, that uh, very soon diverged. So they, all of the codes that are now uh, uh, in the quantum espresso distribution originated from uh, the first, uh, from the first uh, uh, plane wave code that Roberto, um, Brought to um, took to Europe uh, from uh, from Yorktown Heights, and uh, soon uh, the uh, those uh, individual codes stopped uh, to talk to each other and uh, were incompatible with each other. So when uh, I visited him uh, in uh, in Princeton in two thousand and two, it was uh, the time where many other characters that uh, uh, all of you know, were or had been uh, uh, shortly before in Princeton. Those characters uh, include uh, the light of Paolo Giannozzi, Nicola Marzari, and uh, uh, Ralph Gebauer. And uh, that summer of 2002, uh, Roberto and, uh, and the other guys, including myself, decided to try a kind of grand unification of the main codes uh, that started, that originated uh, from uh, uh, the first uh, uh, plane wave code uh, uh, brought back uh, to Europe uh, by, uh, by Roberto in uh, 1984. And that was uh, the birth of uh, uh, the Quantum Espresso, uh, the Quantum Espresso uh, project. The Quantum Espresso project uh, didn't have uh, uh, its name, uh, we tried a few names that uh, for one reason or the other uh, didn't uh, survive, but uh, the final name uh, was uh, found in 2004, as, uh, as uh, Ralph uh, uh, reminded us, told us uh, this morning, while uh, uh, we were uh, at the summer school on electronic structure theory in Beijing, and uh, uh, we were waiting uh, at the Beijing airport uh, to, uh, to board for a flight uh, to Xi'an. So uh, I think uh, the originator of, uh, of the present name uh, is uh, Nicola Marzari, uh, to whom uh, uh, 
uh, goes uh, the credit uh, and uh, our gratitude for finding out the day. So I've been talking for uh, too long already. Let me uh, conclude uh, this introduction uh, by thanking Roberto for accepting uh, to be our first uh, distinguished speaker. And I wish all of you uh, a happy, a happy uh, listening of uh, uh, Roberto's lecture on uh, machine learning and uh, ab initio molecular dynamics. Please, Roberto. Thank you, Stefano. Uh, let me see if I can share the screen. Share. Yes, can you see the screen? Yes, we can. Okay, very good. Uh, uh, okay, let's see that. Okay, so <clears throat> um, uh, I would like to uh, thank uh, uh, Stefano for uh, the very nice uh, uh, introduction and uh, uh, all this uh, recollection. In fact, uh, 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 the recollection on the uh, name of Quantum Espresso is very nice, and I just uh, remember that uh, all the names we came up before <laughs> they are just uh, uh, awful. <laughs> and finally, uh, Nicola was able to find uh, a very good name, and I think that makes uh, uh, this project uh, uh, really uh, uh, distinct from uh, uh, other projects uh, uh, of that kind. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, in my lecture today, uh, I'm going to uh, uh, discuss mostly uh, machine learning based uh, ab initio molecular dynamics, uh, which is uh, uh, the uh, <clears throat> Uh, issue the topic uh, on which uh, I have been working in the last uh, uh, five years. Uh, now, um, uh, in uh, uh, all, you all know what uh, ab initio molecular dynamics does. Uh, uh, well, uh, uh, essentially, it solves Newton equation with forces that are derived from the quantum mechanical state of the electron. And you see in the animation here, uh, the growth uh, of uh, a crystalline nucleus uh, in, uh, uh, in water. Uh, that, is, uh, that is a simulation uh, done with metadynamics uh, using a standard force field model for water. Well, uh, that is something that uh, uh, could be done uh, uh, until uh, very recently, only with empirical force field. And the reason for that uh, is that even though uh, one uh, just uh, does uh, classical molecular dynamics uh, in order to uh, 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 find out uh, the trajectories uh, that give rise to uh, uh, the nucleation of a crystalline nucleus, uh, uh, ab initio molecular dynamics uh, is uh, very expensive, uh, even with uh, the most powerful uh, computer, so that uh, this kind of simulation was uh, definitely uh, out of reach with uh, ab initio MD. Uh, on the other hand, uh, uh, recently there has been uh, a, a very important progress uh, um, based on uh, marrying uh, ab initio molecular dynamics with machine learning. In fact, by uh, learning the potential energy surface uh, uh, from quantum mechanics, uh, machine learning method makes possible simulation of ab initio molecular dynamics quality at uh, uh, force field cost. Essentially, what uh, 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 machine learning does uh, is to uh, uh, learn uh, the local pattern of uh, uh, atomic configuration uh, that uh, uh, give rise uh, to the potential energy surface, uh, and uh, it interpolates uh, 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 the result obtained from the learned pattern to pattern that are uh, 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 that were not included uh, in the training data set, but uh, which are uh, uh, close enough 
to the uh, uh, learn pattern, which is uh, what happens, in fact, uh, in uh, molecular dynamic simulation. Well, there are several methods to do that, uh, and uh, I will uh, discuss uh, uh, the method uh, uh, that uh, uh, was uh, developed uh, in Princeton. Uh, this method uh, is called the potential method, uh, and uh, um, it uses uh, deep neural network to model the potential energy surface and other ground state properties that are accessible to ab initio molecular dynamics. It has uh, been developed uh, in the PhD thesis uh, of uh, uh, Lin Fong Zhang, who is now uh, back in China, and uh, 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 Lin Fong received a doctoral degree in May uh, of uh, uh, last year, and uh, uh, several other people contributed to the effort. I want just to mention that uh, 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 besides Lin Fong, uh, Wenan, Professor Wenan E in the math uh, uh, department uh, uh, at Princeton and myself uh, were the uh, director of uh, uh, Lin Fong uh, thesis. Uh, um, <clears throat> okay, let me uh, move on and uh, uh, um, uh, give some detail. Essentially, we have uh, a physical property that uh, uh, in the example that I will show, at least in some of the example, uh, is the potential energy or the polarization or the polarizability surfaces. So this is a quantity that uh, uh, an observable property O that can be a scalar property in the case of the energy a vector property in the case of the polarization and uh, a tensor property in the case of the polarizability and uh, uh, what uh, uh, the, the deep potential method does, uh, it uh, uh, represents this property as uh, a sum of uh, uh, local properties, uh, the index i run over the atoms in the system and uh, each local property depend on the coordinate of the atoms uh, that belong to the neighborhood of that particular atom. These are the local pattern I was uh, talking about before. And uh, um, <clears throat> uh, so uh, this is uh, a local representation. However, the local properties uh, depend on the atom, the, uh, on the pattern on the atom that uh, uh, are included uh, into uh, several uh, coordination shell of the I atom. And within that neighborhood, uh, uh, the function F uh, is a truly many body uh, function of the uh, atomic coordinate. Uh, um, uh, um, uh, the the, the <clears throat> uh, property F uh, is uh, represented by a symmetry preserving continuous and differentiable function of the atomic coordinates in the environment in environment with contained variable numbers of atoms. Uh, there are uh, uh, some distinctive features uh, uh, in this approach. One is the flexibility of the deep neural network representation that uh, allows us uh, to uh, model essentially any function provided uh, the function can be uh, represented uh, uh, in terms of local properties. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, well, so this is very important uh, uh, feature uh, uh, representing the function in terms of this local property as a superposition of uh, 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 local uh, properties uh, um, uh, um, makes the, the property uh, by construction extensive, which is important to extend the simulation uh, to a system of much larger size than the size that are used to learn uh, the local uh, uh, environmental uh, dependence uh, uh, in terms of density functional theory calculation. Um, another uh, 
very uh, distinctive property of uh, our approach uh, is that uh, uh, um, the learning process uh, can be uh, made on the fly using an efficient approach uh, uh, called DPGen. I will describe uh, uh, later on in a uh, little more detail. And finally, uh, the approach has been uh, uh, implemented uh, 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 on uh, high performance uh, uh, computing uh, platform, uh, particularly platform based uh, on GPUs uh, and uh, has uh, uh, very uh, high computational efficiency on this platform. Let me uh, move on. So uh, uh, basically, uh, as I said, the quantity that uh, the observable property that we are uh, uh, representing is uh, the energy that uh, uh, the potential energy surface is what is given here in the first uh, uh, in the first line. Then another property that we represent uh, is uh, the cell dipole that I call M here. And uh, here in the case of the cell dipoles, I specialize uh, uh, the description to water. So we have uh, 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 a, uh, a dipole uh, uh, associated uh, to the oxygen. Uh, the charge is six because we use uh, a pseudo potential representation. And so these are the valence electron. Uh, uh, six or the, this is the, 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 the charge associated with the uh, ion core of the atom. We have uh, one for the hydrogen. And then we have uh, uh, the electronic uh, center of charge that are the Vanier function. Actually, in uh, water system, uh, in the, uh, irrespective of whether water is uh, uh, still in molecular uh, structure or it is dissociated, partially dissociated into ions, uh, these Vanier centers are always associated to the oxygen. And so we can construct uh, a, a, an average of the four Vanier centers, each one with two electrons associated to the oxygen. We call that Vanier centroid. So this quantity gives uh, the dipole, uh, the cell dipole. And, uh, 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 and then the derivative of this quantity with respect to an external applied electric field uh, um, at fixed position of the nuclei defines the uh, polarization uh, tensor, this alpha, that also has uh, the local representation given here. So uh, all this is described in the paper uh, uh, quoted below. And so this allows us uh, to do uh, a number of things that uh, uh, can be done uh, with standard uh, ab initio molecular dynamics, what, but uh, with a much higher computational efficiency. So let me move on and just uh, uh, spend a few words uh, on the deep potential generator. Uh, uh, now, uh, in uh, a neural network uh, uh, representation, uh, uh, in this diagram here, I uh, uh, describe uh, a uh, uh, network uh, uh, with uh, uh, three uh, uh, layers of uh, uh, nodes uh, or neuron and uh, 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 a certain property uh, A that depend on S uh, that are uh, uh, the uh, descriptor for uh, these properties or so the atomic coordinate, for instance, in our case uh, is given uh, by a complex uh, uh, functional form that depend on this parameter W and, uh, uh, um, and B. And uh, um, uh, this, uh, this is a, a convolution of a convolution of a convolution. So it is uh, a rather complex function that depends uh, in a way that is highly nonlinear on the parameter of the network uh, that uh, have to be learned by uh, minimizing uh, uh, the distance uh, between the prediction of the network uh, and uh, uh, the actual DFT calculation. Uh, 
So um, <clears throat> in the DPGen procedure, rather than performing a large number of DFT calculation or of ab initio molecular dynamics first, and then trying to uh, 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 describe that uh, with uh, a neural network, uh, what we do is that we exploit uh, the nonlinear dependence uh, of the network on the network parameter, which means that uh, if we uh, do a minimization to find the network parameter, we will get uh, typically the minimization to find the network parameter is done with a procedure that is uh, a stochastic uh, gradient descent method. So it is a method that, uh, um, uh, that uh, uh, find a local minimum. So uh, we will get uh, different local minima, different network parameters. Uh, if we start from a different uh, initialization of the network parameter. So what we do in DPGen, we use uh, a uh, uh, Gaussian distribution for the uh, initialization of the network parameter. And then we select uh, a few uh, uh, neural network that uh, uh, are generated uh, with different network parameter. Um, the ensemble of neural network, uh, we have a, in principle an ensemble of neural network that we can be generated uh, by simply varying the initialization. Uh, this ensemble is already well represented by few members, uh, three or four uh, in practice. And uh, now what happens? Uh, if the network uh, is well trained, uh, uh, even though the network parameter are after uh, the minimization are different, uh, the, uh, uh, it will, uh, all these uh, members of the ensemble of neural network will, will represent equally well the physical property of interest. But, uh, and so we can explore the phase space with uh, uh, the uh, so far trained uh, uh, deep neural network, and we keep uh, uh, following uh, this uh, exploration procedure that is done with molecular dynamics, but molecular dynamics guided by the neural network, uh, which is very efficient uh, computationally, much less costly than quantum mechanical calculation. And uh, uh, we measure uh, how close are the prediction uh, obtained with uh, uh, different members of this uh, ensemble of network. Uh, as uh, we reach a point where the predictions start to diverge, uh, it means uh, that uh, uh, the neural network uh, is no longer good uh, to describe properly uh, this property at that uh, uh, thermodynamic condition. So we label uh, this configuration and we do a uh, quantum mechanical uh, calculation for this particular configuration adding this particular configuration to the uh, library of uh, the training data. And uh, uh, we uh, improve the training of the model by this uh, additional uh, configuration. And we proceed in this cycle until uh, 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 the network uh, is uh, uh, sufficiently good uh, over the entire uh, range of thermodynamic condition of interest. So uh, this is uh, uh, the procedure that uh, uh, we use. Uh, let me move on now. I have described what uh, the potential molecular dynamics does. Uh, I will now show a few examples uh, that are uh, uh, definitely beyond the reach of direct uh, ab initio molecular dynamic simulation. Uh, the example that I will uh, talk about today uh, is phase diagram of a scan-based DP model, the auto-ionization of water, homogeneous nucleation of ice, and uh, uh, something to do with vibrational spectra. But uh, let me um, just uh, say that uh, uh, the very uh, most of the calculation I will show today are uh, based on classical MD simulation, 
but uh, uh, we are also working at including nuclear quantum effect uh, uh, via uh, path integral simulation, as Stefano mentioned in its introduction. The uh, uh, first example uh, is a uh, deep potential model for water based uh, on, uh, uh, on scan uh, DFT uh, functional. Uh, this work uh, uh, is uh, going to appear uh, soon uh, in physical review letters and is available in this archive uh, preprint. Um, uh, so what we did in this work, uh, we were able to model uh, uh, water uh, over a vast range of uh, thermodynamic condition including uh, 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 crystalline phases uh, in a range of pressure going from uh, 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 ambient pressure uh, to uh, uh, 50 uh, gigapascal and uh, including all the crystalline phases that occur in this uh, 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 domain at pressure for, uh, for temperature extending from uh, uh, at low pressure from uh, uh, zero uh, to 400 uh, Kelvin and uh, at uh, uh, high pressure extending up to uh, 2000, uh, uh, beyond 2000, uh, 2000 Kelvin. Um, so, uh, in this uh, vast range of pressure and temperature, uh, there are many different uh, crystalline phases uh, indicated here by 1H, uh, 11, 2, 6, uh, 8, 7, 7 second, uh, and uh, a fluid phase that uh, uh, can be just a standard molecular fluid at uh, 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 low pressure and uh, becomes uh, an ionized uh, fluid uh, at uh, high pressure. Now the red uh, are the red line indicate the boundary line between the different phases that were obtained with the DP model. The gray line indicate the boundary line that uh, um, uh, are actually uh, uh, the correct. Uh, boundary nine as uh, obtained from experiment. <clears throat> so we can see that uh, uh, overall the qualitative picture is uh, uh, quite good, but uh, uh, there are uh, uh, deviation from uh, uh, the uh, prediction of the model, which is essentially the prediction of this particular DFT functional for this system and uh, experiment. Um, uh, I uh, want to show here, there is in this uh, small uh, uh, phase diagram here, is uh, the prediction obtained with uh, uh, one of the best uh, available empirical potential model for water compared with experiment. We see that there are deviation from uh, experiment also with this model. And uh, uh, particularly this model become particularly bad uh, as we go to high pressure because at high pressure, the uh, uh, ice rule that uh, uh, characterize uh, uh, water uh, uh, structure at low pressure um, uh, are broken uh, more often, much more often than at low pressure, giving rise to partially ionized configuration. But these partially ionized configuration are not possible with a rigid uh, water model as a T4P. Instead, they are possible with, uh, 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 with uh, uh, ab initio MD and with the deep potential model. Um, I want to mention a couple of more things here. Uh, this, uh, uh, here we have I6, but there is also ice uh, uh, experimentally uh, uh, at low temperature ice 15. Uh, would be the most stable structure, but ice uh, 15 is only metastable uh, within the deep potential model. This might be related uh, to the difficulty of uh, uh, 
stabilize uh, uh, the phase uh, uh, ICE uh, uh, 15 with uh, uh, standard uh, semi local functional. And also, uh, uh, this uh, ICE 3 that uh, is stable in this uh, small region here experimentally uh, is only meta stable in the uh, deep potential model. Uh, that might be due to the fact that the, that the boundary between uh, uh, ice, uh, hexagonal ice and ice second uh, is pushed at higher pressure uh, with uh, uh, this uh, uh, model. Uh, and also uh, you can observe that the uh, melting line of ice, uh, uh, um, of hexagonal ice, uh, uh, is pushed by about approximately 40 Kelvin at uh, higher uh, temperature compared with the experiment. Now, these simulations were all done uh, with classical simulation. The, uh, uh, and so there will be correction due to nuclear quantum effect, but the correction that uh, uh, will be, uh, I expect those corrections to be smaller than the uh, deviation of the model from experiment. Um, uh, so what is interesting about that is that a single deep potential model can describe water over this vast range of temperature and pressure. Uh, in order to learn uh, the local pattern in this vast range of temperature and pressure, uh, uh, we explore this huge phase space with uh, 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 the deep potential. And uh, uh, we had to perform less than 35,000 DFT minimization to construct the potential energy surface, which is uh, approximately uh, um, 0.05% of the total configuration visited uh, uh, with uh, uh, the DPGEN technique. The error in the free energy that we estimate uh, is approximately one uh, milli electron volt uh, per molecule. Of course, this is much better than chemical accuracy, but this is the error compared to the DFT reference. So uh, uh, the, the, the deep potential representation is really uh, quite uh, accurate. I want to mention just one more point here that uh, uh, is, has been possible, uh, I think for the first time with this simulation and that uh, uh, um, uh, consists in the study of the transition from uh, ice seven uh, to ice seven second uh, and then to the ionic fluid. Uh, let's suppose that we move on a uh, on a uh, isot uh, sorry isobar over here, and uh, 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 if we move along this isobar, uh, what we see we see that uh, uh, ice seven uh, uh, that uh, is still a molecular system will start uh, developing ionic diffusion. Uh, as we increase uh, the temperature. Uh, ionic diffusion start to uh, grow uh, exponentially with temperature and eventually it saturates. Before just uh, right before saturating, there is a more rapid variation in enthalpy and volume. And, uh, but this variation in enthalpy and volume uh, in simulation here that we are done with uh, 432 uh, molecule cell uh, appear reversible. Uh, we can go up and down here and there is, but there is still this more rapid variation. What we could do uh, with this simulation that could not be done before, we could study what happens to this uh, 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 rapid variation here if we increase the size of the cell. We went to 3,000, uh, approximately 3,500 molecule. And what we see, we see a sharpening of this uh, rapid variation region, both uh, in the enthalpy and in the volume. So this is consistent uh, with a weak 
quickly first order uh, phase transition between I7 and I7 second. And uh, indeed, uh, uh, a year or so ago, uh, that was uh, uh, found also experimentally that this uh, uh, super ionic transition that occurred between I7 and I7 second is a weekly first order, uh, is a weekly first order transition. I will not spend more time on that, but that is just to say that uh, uh, issues uh, like uh, uh, five si uh, five uh, finite size uh, scaling that are important to assess uh, the nature of a thermodynamic transition become possible uh, with uh, uh, deep learning. Let me uh, move on and discuss uh, another example that uh, uh, well, that has uh, still not been uh, published because we are uh, studying the effect of nuclear quantum uh, on that, uh, nuclear quantum effect on that, but uh, here I will discuss only at the classical level. So uh, uh, we know that uh, uh, the self-ionization of water is uh, what gives rise to the uh, pH of water and uh, a quantity that is called the Kw, uh, the K factor of water, uh, is given by the product uh, of the concentration of the ions uh, that uh, uh, are due to the dissociation of the water molecule. I have here a, an animation that shows uh, uh, the recombination of these two ions. Uh, this uh, animation uh, was uh, obtained by uh, Chunil uh, Zhang at uh, uh, Temple University. And uh, 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 it shows a recombination process uh, as first described uh, uh, in a paper by uh, Asanali, uh, Ali Asanali and the Parinello's group, uh, which was published uh, in the, uh, the proceeding of the National Academy of Sciences uh, in 2011. So uh, now we can describe these processes with uh, uh, deep potential molecular dynamics. And uh, uh, what uh, now, even though the recombination can be studied, uh, can occur spontaneously if the ions are close enough, the dissociation required uh, uh, enhanced sampling technique, and in particular, uh, uh, we use here metadynamics uh, 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 and uh, we use a reaction coordinate S that uh, ha has been recently uh, uh, introduced uh, in the Parinello's group and is based uh, on the Voronoi tessellation of the, uh, uh, of the uh, system uh, uh, of the disorder uh, structure of the oxygen in the system. You see, with traditional, uh, with traditional uh, uh, um, uh, collective coordinates that are based on distances, one has this spherical uh, distribution and one recognizes if the ion, so the difficulty in this simulation is the fact that uh, uh, as the simulation proceed, the proton keep diffusing all over the place. Uh, and so it is difficult to keep track of uh, which ion is which. And, uh, um, and uh, if we use uh, 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 coordinates, the, the spherical, uh, that depend only on the uh, spherical distance, you see that there is an overlap between this region that is associated to the hydronium and this region that are associated to neighboring water molecule. So if we are in the overlap, we do not know if uh, uh, the uh, uh, hydronium uh, is here or if it is there. Instead, uh, with the Voronoi tessellation, this, uh, 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 this effect uh, uh, does not uh, occur anymore. And uh, uh, then we can study uh, uh, this thing with uh, uh, the reaction coordinate uh, that has this form suggested uh, in the paper in the uh, Parinello's group. And uh, uh, we can then compute uh, the quantity that is the PKW, that is the logarithm uh, uh, of the uh, quantity uh, KW. 
and uh, we can study this thing as a function of system size. And in fact, uh, uh, we see that uh, uh, we have, uh, 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 this correspond to a system with 500 molecule and this correspond to a system with 1000 molecule. We see that uh, 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 we achieve uh, 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 convergence with respect to size only with uh, sizes that are beyond uh, uh, what would be possible with uh, ab initio MD. And now uh, uh, we do this system uh, here at 330K ambient pressure and uh, uh, using a deep potential model based on the scan functional. Uh, what we get uh, for the uh, PKW for heavy water, I did the compare, we did the comparison with heavy water rather than light water, even though for us it would be the same to use one or the other, uh, simply because uh, uh, this is based on classical simulation and heavy water should be closer to the, uh, um, uh, uh, to our, to the result of the simulation. And we see that uh, uh, the agreement uh, uh, for the PKW with uh, experiment uh, is uh, uh, rather uh, uh, is uh, uh, rather good. So these are difficult properties uh, uh, to predict from first principle, but now uh, it becomes possible to do it. Let me move on and describe uh, another uh, another uh, uh, example. Uh, in this other example, uh, we consider. Uh, nucleation of ice from seeding simulation. So I will describe essentially in a seeding simulation is a simulation in which uh, nucleation is studied by uh, inserting a seed, a crystalline seed inside uh, uh, a liquid uh, as I will describe uh, uh, in the next uh, uh, couple of slides, uh, and uh, uh, but uh, and uh, uh, then uh, one uh, uses uh, 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 the result of this seeding simulation uh, together with classical nucleation theory (CNT) in order to obtain the nucleation rates. Um, <clears throat> but before doing that. Uh, we need uh, to study the difference in chemical potential between solid and liquid uh, at uh, various temperature uh, from enhanced sampling simulation for a scan-based uh, deep potential model. And uh, uh, the result, uh, uh, the chemical potential difference as a function of the supercooling of water uh, is uh, 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 represented here. So uh, in uh, uh, the, the, the difference in chemical potential, uh, the supercooling uh, uh, is the supercooling that one has in the model. So in experiment, the supercooling is supercooling with respect to the melting temperature of ice, that is 273 Kelvin. In the DP model, the melting temperature is around 310 Kelvin, as shown here by this coexistence uh, uh, calculation. And uh, uh, so uh, it is supercooling with respect to that melting temperature in the model. And similarly, the, the supercooling for the tip 4 p ice is supercooling with respect to the melting temperature of tip 4 p ice. And we can see that as a function of the supercooling, the difference in chemical potential that can be obtained with enhanced sampling uh, simulation uh, is uh, uh, indeed uh, uh, techniques, again, developed uh, in uh, Parinello's group. And uh, uh, I'm very, I've been uh, happy uh, uh, of uh, having uh, the opportunity to collaborate with Pablo Piaggi, who uh, received the PhD under the direction of Michele and is now a postdoc uh, at our center at Princeton University. So uh, you can see that uh, Actually, the deep potential model, uh, if it is uh, uh, compared to experiment uh, uh, in this way, uh, looks uh, described the, 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 um, 
difference in chemical potential uh, better or slightly better than uh, the tip 4 PIs, uh, in spite of the fact that tip 4 PIs uh, has a much better agreement with experiment for the melting temperature. Um, now, um, <clears throat> uh, again, uh, uh, this is uh, uh, what we do. Now let's go to the seeding simulation. And first, uh, let me remember, well, I think here I do haven't uh, had the time to uh, do the the um, to check on the uh, animation of the, the 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 way the different things are uh, uh, indicated here. So uh, uh, these uh, uh, the rate are the rate are derived from this expression that is the expression uh, given by classical nucleation theory. So uh, essentially, the difference in free energy between uh, the solid, that is, this uh, solid nucleus that has been inserted here in the liquid around, uh, uh, depend on the uh, uh, fact that one gain uh, in free energy in the bulk solid but uh, one lose uh, uh, in free energy at the interface. So one has this expression for the uh, difference in free energy. Uh, the, uh, uh, where, where is that? The, the R to the cube, I cannot see, well, doesn't matter. Uh, the R to the cube gives the dependence on the volume of the nucleus that is supposed to be spherical. And R squared give the dependence uh, uh, on uh, the surface. Uh, it is a cost uh, of free energy because uh, of the mismatch between the solid and the liquid at the interface. But for sufficiently large volume, the bulk uh, stable phase uh, will uh, gain. And indeed, if we uh, perform a simulation as shown here in this upper uh, diagram on the right, we uh, monitor the number of ice-like configuration at different temperatures. Uh, you see that uh, when the temperature is uh, uh, low, uh, the uh, uh, ice-like uh, uh, structure uh, uh, decreases with time. Time uh, is of order of nanosecond here, and uh, uh, um, uh, the structure grow at uh, uh, the um, uh, uh, higher uh, uh, temperature, but uh, 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 and remain stable in a small range of temperature. Now, uh, the expression for the for the rate is given here by this uh, expression here. So we see that uh, the uh, difference in free energy, the C, indicate the size of the critical nucleus that can be found uh, uh, in the simulation that I just described. This gives the uh, thermodynamic factor, but there is also a dynamical factor that uh, depend uh, on uh, 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 Z and F plus uh, in addition to the density of uh, the fluid. Uh, Z uh, is what is called the Zeldovich factor and F plus is uh, uh, the kinetic prefactor. That is something that one can also observe in the simulation, which is the accretion rate of molecule by the crystalline nucleus. The Zeldovich uh, factor has uh, uh, an expression, an analytic expression in terms of delta mu, the temperature and the critical number of uh, 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 crystalline uh, uh, molecules um, uh, within uh, uh, classical nucleation theory and essentially gives the probability that uh, when uh, one uh, is on top of the barrier here, separating uh, uh, the region uh, where uh, the nucleus is unstable and the region where the nucleus is stable, uh, this gives the probability that the, if one sits exactly on top, uh, it, uh, 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 one would go on, uh, on, uh, uh, the, on the growing side uh, of the nucleus rather than 
uh, dissolve uh, uh, by going back. So similar to what one does uh, in uh, uh, rate uh, theory uh, uh, for uh, uh, defects, for instance, uh, in, uh, in solids. And now here are just two simulations. Uh, uh, this simulation here include uh, uh, 12,000 water liquid water, uh, water molecule in total and 600 molecule in the cluster. And one can see that uh, uh, at this temperature, uh, 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 the cluster uh, reduces its size, whereas uh, at this temperature, the, star, the cluster increases its size. Well, if one put together this result, now this is, uh, now the point is that uh, the lower the supersaturation, so the lower uh, the temperature of the supercooling, uh, is uh, so that the, the, uh, uh, if one is at higher temperature, the simulation need to be done with uh, larger sizes of the system and larger sizes of the cluster because the critical nucleus will be larger at this uh, uh, higher temperature. And so in fact, we have simulation running out now with uh, uh, more than 100,000 water molecules. All at uh, the uh, ab initio uh, MD level. And let's see how the results are for the simulation rate. Here, these uh, uh, are uh, uh, um, experimental uh, uh, data point. These are the result with T4 PIs. And uh, these are the two simulation that we have done so far, and then we interpolate with classical nucleation theory, we get this green line. This is the result obtained with the MW and other empirical potential model for water. And now what is this uh, uh, green region here? The green region here is the uncertainty in our simulation, simply due to the uncertainty at for the critical temperature estimation. Uh, 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 if we have, uh, we estimate our, our uh, uncertainty in the estimation of the critical temperature to be plus or minus two Kelvin. With plus or minus two Kelvin, you see that uh, one has uh, all uh, uh, the, 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 um, uh, the nucleation rate uh, uh, could occur within this uh, green region. So um, uh, the, the uh, important result is that the ab initio result for nucleation rate and surface free energy are in the right ballpark. And uh, uh, the result uh, from ab initio theory are actually uh, uh, not in bad agreement with experiment given the uncertainty and uh, 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 in uh, this uh, very delicate uh, uh, quantity. Now, let me uh, move on. <clears throat> I mentioned vibrational spectroscopies, uh, infrared and Raman. Here, using the cell dipole or using the polarization, one can compute uh, uh, one can compute correlation function, time correlation function, and uh, from this time correlation function, one can obtain this quantity that is actually related to the imaginary part of the dielectric uh, function that gives the absorption. And, uh, uh, and uh, you see the comparison between theory and experiment. Uh, here again, temperature dependence uh, of the Raman uh, scattering uh, cross-section at uh, uh, very uh, uh, low frequencies in which uh, in this region, the, uh, 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 the intensity in the Raman spectrum is uh, approximately uh, two orders of magnitude lower than the frequency in correspondence with the stretching modes that are the most uh, 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 um, give rise to the, 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 the um, uh, higher intensity in the spectrum. And so it is very difficult to get uh, uh, a result uh, uh, over there. But not only could we get the result, we could also study the temperature uh, dependence uh, and compare with the uh, experiment uh, with this simulation 
uh, based uh, on uh, the deep potential model. Um, <clears throat> let me just uh, 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 spend a few words uh, uh, here on the effect of the DFT approximation. And uh, here uh, I don't uh, do any shift. I report uh, experimental data for the density of uh, water, liquid water and uh, ice. Well, uh, the data point for ice should go at, uh, up to the melting temperature that is 273. But anyhow, that's the, uh, uh, how it behaves. And so you see that there is a, a, a discontinuity in the density going from the solid to the liquid in experiment. That is the result with scan. Uh, the discontinuity has the right size, uh, but it's smaller than experiment and everything is shifted to a uh, higher temperature. We also see that uh, uh, in the liquid, there is uh, a temperature of maximum density that is approximately here. In the scan, there is also a, a temperature of maximum density that is approximately over here. Now, if we go to uh, uh, hybrid functional approximation, this is PB0 TS, we see that uh, it improves a little bit with respect to scan. And here we have uh, the hybrid version of scan in which we include 10% of uh, exact exchange, uh, exact Hartree-Fock exchange. And we see that uh, the discontinuity is uh, 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 approximately right. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, also uh, the results are pushed down to lower temperature. We have some preliminary data using path integral molecular dynamics. Uh, and with this preliminary data with path integral molecular dynamics, we see that uh, the, uh, uh, that, uh, uh, the, uh, the, the temperature of uh, uh, um, of uh, uh, maximum uh, density is pushed down to approximately 290K, not too far, uh, well, approximately 10K above uh, uh, the uh, experimental results. So we are quite confident that uh, by climbing uh, the Jacob ladder of uh, density functional theory, one can improve uh, also on these uh, 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 delicate uh, uh, properties. And since we are talking about uh, uh, quantum espresso here, I want just to uh, 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 report uh, a couple of slides that I uh, uh, received from uh, uh, Xinyu uh, Ko and uh, Rob Distagio. Uh, 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 Rob uh, uh, is uh, a former uh, postdoc in Princeton who is now a professor at uh, Cornell University and she knew was a former student uh, in Princeton who is now a postdoc working with Rob and uh, Biswajit Santra was also a, a former uh, student at Princeton. So they have developed uh, uh, within uh, the quantum espresso, a technique uh, uh, to compute uh, a linear scaling technique to compute uh, the uh, uh, exact uh, exchange. And this linear scaling technique is based uh, on uh, uh, using a representation of the wave function based uh, on maximally localized Vanier function. Uh, the code uh, is uh, uh, available. Uh, this is the alpha. EXX uh, version that is currently available in the CP module in quantum espresso. It allows to do uh, both uh, uh, NVE, NVT, and NPH, NPT uh, simulation with variable cell and include the contribution of the variable cell to uh, the uh, exact exchange and the code scale uh, quite well uh, with uh, uh, massively uh, parallel uh, computer. Uh, there is a version that uh, uh, they are developing right now and which will be uh, accessible in the near future. And in this version, it, it uh, has uh, modified uh, the way 
uh, of taking advantage of the localization of the Vanier function in a way that is much more efficient so that uh, it can achieve uh, a speed up uh, of six uh, compared to the alpha version for liquid uh, water, a speed up uh, of 15 for a system uh, 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 TiO2 and water interface. So the more heterogeneous the system is, the more uh, uh, the approach, uh, uh, the beta approach uh, is effective compared to the alpha one. And the third, uh, 30 factor of speed up for metal doped uh, molten salt, uh, 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 for metal doped uh, molten salt. So that uh, is uh, 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 a uh, capability that uh, will be added to the quantum espresso uh, uh, soon in the future. So at this point, uh, I think I'm used uh, all my time. I want to just uh, uh, spend a few words on conclusion and outlook. So uh, deep potential molecular dynamics is several orders of magnitude more efficient than direct ab initio molecular dynamics and has linear scaling with size due to its local uh, representation, opening the way to studies well beyond the reach of ab initio molecular dynamics. Complex phase behavior, reactions in solution, nucleation, dynamic response. Uh, deep potential is a proxy for density functional theory. Um, <clears throat> quantify the model deviation from the reference is important. Uh, as uh, uh, I've shown uh, uh, in the deep potential uh, method, uh, DPGen description, algorithms to achieve this goal are crucial. For example, the spread of a network ensemble, reweighting of uh, deep potential data I've not talked about, but they can be reweighted since the deep potential is so close to uh, the ab initio molecular dynamics to get uh, the true prediction of ab initio molecular dynamics uh, for configuration. Uh, based on the deep potential model, etc. More properties are accessible to first principle calculation. And uh, uh, therefore, these provide a, a, a wider check of uh, uh, DFT approximation. There are a number of issues. Uh, uh, the local representation does not uh, uh, describe uh, 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 explicitly uh, long range electrostatics, which may be important uh, in uh, a highly heterogeneous system. Uh, and uh, uh, the whole, uh, um, uh, the whole uh, uh, issue of quantum correction uh, is open. Quantum correction to statics, that can be done uh, in principle exactly with but integral simulation. But there are also quantum correction to dynamics uh, and spectroscopy. Uh, which uh, require uh, of uh, which require approximation uh, because of the sign problem in sampling uh, the uh, uh, appropriate correlation function. And then there is the issue of chemical accuracy, DFT and beyond. With that, uh, I uh, thank you all for your attention. And uh, of course, uh, there are uh, many people uh, whom I should acknowledge some of them were mentioned here. I want to recall again uh, Lin Fong for his fantastic work in developing uh, the deep potential method uh, and also uh, 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 Han Wang, uh, another uh, uh, collaborator from China who has been behind many of uh, these uh, uh, applications in addition to the people currently at the CSI Center in Princeton and of course the Department of Energy for supporting us. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Roberto, for uh, the fantastic lecture. Uh, I don't know exactly how to proceed uh, with uh, the discussion. Probably the best thing would be that uh, uh, participants uh, uh, wishing to ask questions uh, do so in the chat in the zoom chat and uh, i will uh, i will read i will read uh, uh, the questions uh, to uh, professor carr
So let me just break the ice. Uh, would you tell us something, Roberto, uh, about uh, uh, the prospects uh, for uh, the open issues that you have mentioned? Uh, if uh, there are uh, any progresses uh, uh, that you see around the corner concerning uh, quantum corrections to dynamics uh, or uh, long range interactions, uh, any of those problems? Uh, can you yeah. mention a few, yes, I a can few lines of research? In fact, uh, uh, long range uh, electrostatics uh, uh, is uh, essentially there. We have a code, uh, uh, again, uh, uh, I'm collaborating with uh, Lin Fong, uh, Han uh, and uh, uh, Wenan on that. Uh, uh, we have already a code that is not uh, yet public uh, uh, to deal with that, uh, but uh, uh, it works. Uh, and uh, essentially, it is based uh, on uh, um, using uh, the ion uh, uh, charges uh, and the electronic charges given by the Vanier function uh, uh, Vanier Center uh, to describe the long range electrostatic. Uh, just uh, uh, the long range uh, uh, electrostatic with this uh, charge center is enough because uh, uh, at short range, uh, uh, everything is taken into account uh, by uh, the deep potential. So uh, one can separate uh, the 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 the, the uh, uh, long range that is taken into account with uh, equal uh, kind of technique and uh, 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 deal all the rest with the deep potential. This kind of thing uh, works uh, and uh, shows that uh, in typical bulk situation, uh, somehow uh, uh, the uh, the deep potential is able to take care of uh, the effect uh, already with uh, uh, the uh, short range part. Of course, uh, this is even in the bulk, this is not completely true because if you are looking at uh, longitudinal optical splitting of the phonon in ionic material, uh, that uh, uh, will uh, uh, require a, a long range electrostatic. But for most of the properties that I mentioned in the example that I considered before, this long range electrostatic uh, is not important. Uh, but as I, meant, as I said, there are cases in which it is important uh, and uh, uh, we find that it can be taken care of uh, again using the Vanier uh, function. In principle, we could also use information on the spread of the Vanier function, but so far we haven't uh, found that uh, to be uh, necessary, just the center is enough. Then there is the issue of uh, quantum correction. Quantum correction is tough, is a tough problem, uh, quantum correction to dynamics. Quantum correction to statics, we can do, and we are studying uh, how uh, they affect uh, properties uh, and uh, by doing path integral uh, simulation and uh, there again uh, uh, different functional, uh, the combination of functional and quantum correction uh, is important uh, to uh, understand this effect. Now, in the case of quantum correction to dynamics, unfortunately, one has uh, uh, the so-called dynamical sign problem due to the fact that uh, uh, the, the, the uh, dynamic uh, um, correlation function that uh, uh, one uh, uh, is interested in uh, uh, is a complex uh, quantity uh, that uh, 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 is uh, widely uh, oscillating. So uh, there is no way of doing the calculation exactly, uh, at least so far. Uh, there are various methods, uh, uh, like for instance, uh, ring polymer, molecular, di molecular dynamics, uh, centroid molecular dynamics, uh, or uh, 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 linearized, uh, sing, uh, linearized um, um, approximation for the Wigner uh, dynamics. And uh, these are all uh, semi-classical approximation 
which, however, for a system like water may work. We are studying them and we are also uh, combining them uh, with uh, maximum entropy method uh, in order to, uh, uh, to um, uh, uh, include uh, uh, effect uh, 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 beyond, uh, uh, beyond uh, the approximation that is uh, unfortunately uncontrolled. To give some control, let's say, over the uncontrolled approximation of the various methods that I uh, uh, described. So we are studying uh, this thing, and uh, um, I think that uh, uh, for systems uh, like water, uh, it is possible that uh, in the future it will be possible to include this effect. Okay, now there are a number, uh, thank you very much, Roberto. There are a number of uh, questions that are flowing through the chat. I will take the liberty of uh, uh, selecting among, uh, among them. Uh, there are uh, uh, two general questions, uh, uh, one uh, directly related to your talk, uh, the other to the general field uh, of ab initial molecular dynamics. You may want uh, uh, to take them together or just one of the two. Uh, uh, two participants uh, are asking you uh, some uh, clarifications uh, about uh, the relative uh, merits uh, of uh, uh, Carparinello and the Born-Oppenheimer molecular dynamics. Uh, uh, the other question are related, but on the same style, relative merits uh, uh, of uh, uh, deep ne neural network uh, uh, machine learning uh, uh, techniques uh, and uh, 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 Gaussian process, kernel process, uh, uh, kernel methods based uh, on uh, uh, Gaussian processes? Yeah, uh, these are good questions. So uh, let me start uh, with the, un, the one on uh, uh, Carparinello versus uh, um, uh, uh, Born Oppenheimer. Well, uh, I don't see uh, the Carparinello versus uh, Born Oppenheimer as uh, uh, two uh, uh, separate ways uh, of doing ab initio molecular dynamics uh, uh, because uh, 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 the born Oppenheimer condition uh, can be uh, satisfied uh, uh, sufficiently accurately with uh, 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 Carpaninello molecular dynamics. And in fact, uh, in the limit in which the fictitious mass uh, uh, goes to zero, it will be satisfied exactly. And, uh, uh, and also because uh, the um, uh, uh, iterative way of uh, doing Carparinello uh, molecular dynamics uh, is essential also to do Born-Oppenheimer molecular dynamics. In fact, uh, we have uh, nowadays uh, 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 schemes uh, uh, that are also available, I think, within uh, uh, the Quantum Espresso, both in the CP and in the PW uh, um, uh, module of the Quantum Espresso, uh, by which uh, one uh, uh, can uh, enforce uh, the Born-Oppenheimer condition uh, in uh, an iterative approach. Uh, now, uh, the, at the beginning, when we developed, uh, uh, when we developed uh, the, the Carparinello method, we also tested uh, uh, the um, uh, uh, exact, uh, let's say, um, uh, condition uh, uh, to imp uh, imp impose uh, uh, exactly the born oppenheimer condition, but it was much more expensive within our iterative approach, but it was uh, much more expensive than doing uh, 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 the Carparinello with a reasonable value of the, uh, of the fictitious mass. Uh, so at that time, uh, uh, we didn't even uh, uh, write anything about that, uh, uh, but we should have done it. Uh, um, uh, one uh, 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 more thing here, uh, nowadays with uh, much more powerful computers that are available, uh, it is important 
to uh, satisfy, particularly as we go to this uh, accurate uh, calculation, uh, it is important to satisfy uh, the Born-Oppenheimer condition uh, uh, as closely as possible. This is particularly important uh, to construct uh, uh, the potential. So this is uh, uh, now uh, regarding the second question, of course, uh, there are uh, various uh, different methods uh, uh, to, uh, uh, to, do, um, uh, to use machine learning. And uh, uh, there are various groups who have uh, uh, developed uh, 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 methodologies to do that. Uh, um, um, as I said at the beginning, I uh, uh, was uh, just uh, going to uh, discuss the methodology uh, I was uh, uh, um, uh, involved uh, uh, in. Uh, again, one can uh, uh, distinguish two general groups. One group that is based on deep neural network and one group of methodologies uh, that are based on these uh, uh, Gaussian uh, uh, processes on uh, kernel, kernel method. Um, as I can see, the advantage or uh, one advantage that I can see with uh, uh, um, deep neural network uh, is that deep neural network uh, can represent uh, really very uh, complex uh, functional behavior. In fact, uh, uh, can represent essentially any function. Um, uh, and the difficulty uh, is mostly then uh, in the learning process because the learning process uh, can be uh, a process uh, that uh, uh, is uh, uh, NP complete. Uh, so uh, the learning process is difficult, is hard, uh, uh, while the, uh, uh, the uh, deep neural network representation can uh, 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 represent essentially any function. Now, I don't know I, uh, how well uh, uh, that can be done uh, uh, with uh, uh, kernel method, although from the result that I've seen, uh, kernel methods seem to be work uh, uh, quite, uh, uh, quite fine. So that uh, uh, is the only uh, thing I could say. I must add uh, just one comment. I asked my uh, friend uh, Wenan, uh, uh, who is a professor in mathematics uh, uh, and uh, understand better than me the, the, the complex uh, uh, subtleties of those things. And one thing that uh, he told me is that uh, while I understand uh, why uh, uh, deep neural network work, uh, I still don't understand why kernel method do. That is his. Uh, <laughs> that was uh, uh, his question on that. Maybe we should keep discussing that more to try to understand that uh, better. There are uh, a couple of uh, related questions uh, on uh, uh, molecular uh, absorption on molecules, uh, on molecular absorption uh, on surfaces, uh, and another. Related, uh, uh, related question was about the ability of uh, uh, neural networks, uh, uh, neural network potentials, uh, present uh, or future ability uh, to mimic uh, uh, weak, inter weak molecular forces uh, such as uh, Van der Waals or uh, intermediately uh, weak forces. Yes. Uh, so the first one was, okay, what was the issue on uh, uh, absorption? Molecular absorption is related, I would say. So one, uh, one participant ah, okay. uh, was asking about the ability of uh, neural network potentials to predict yeah. molecular absorption. The other yeah. one was more methodological, but the two are related, I think. Okay. Well, uh, of course, uh, 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 absorption can be chemisorption or physisorption. <laughs> and, Let's say physisorption. <laughs> Let's say physisorption. Okay. So, or intermediate. Uh, okay. So, uh, uh, of course, uh, uh, the neural network, uh, uh, the neural network uh, um, uh, doesn't uh, uh, 
um, uh, discover uh, uh, yet <laughs> new quantum mechanics. Uh, and so uh, it gets uh, uh, out in output uh, what uh, uh, it gets in input. Uh, so far, uh, the um, uh, examples uh, uh, I've been, I presented uh, used um, um, a network that were trained uh, uh, mostly with uh, the uh, scan functional. The scan uh, uh, functional is a meta GGA that was developed uh, in the uh, last decade uh, by uh, John Perdue and uh, collaborators and uh, um, uh, has uh, the uh, ability uh, to describe uh, uh, also what they call intermediate van der Waals interaction. Um, uh, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we get a decent uh, uh, description of uh, water without uh, having uh, to add uh, uh, additional uh, uh, Van der Waals uh, uh, interaction. Uh, I like that because it is uh, within a seamless uh, approach. However, the, um, uh, uh, while these things seems to be working sufficiently well in a system like water, it does not uh, work uh, well uh, for system in which uh, uh, the uh, Van der Waals effect uh, are uh, more, even more crucial and uh, uh, the interaction that uh, uh, keep the system together are uh, 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 weaker. Uh, like for instance, physics option or uh, uh, um, um, organic uh, crystals, so crystal made by uh, organic molecules. In that case, uh, uh, we tried in some organic crystal or some uh, case in the past, uh, the scan, uh, uh, although uh, slightly better than PBE, uh, uh, would not work. Uh, and uh, in fact, uh, adding uh, Van der Waals interaction is important. Now, Van der Waals interaction, uh, um, uh, uh, there it is important to do something. I mean, the way in which Van der Waals interaction are uh, uh, added in uh, most uh, calculation is just by doing a sum of two body term, which however, is uh, already a, a drastic uh, approximation to the Van der Waals interaction because uh, a system uh, is uh, really uh, described by two body terms only, only if it is two body. <laughs> so uh, um, uh, to go beyond that uh, uh, is difficult. Uh, and uh, for instance, uh, uh, Alex uh, Tachenko and uh, also uh, uh, Rob Distagio and uh, other people have made uh, uh, progress uh, 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 in that direction. Um, I think that uh, um, uh, this technique could be uh, uh, also included to some extent in the, uh, the potential because the local region of the uh, uh, deep potential or machine learned potential. Uh, in the example I've shown today, uh, we use a, a, a radius for the local environment of six angstrom, but uh, uh, one could go beyond that, let's say eight angstrom or so, uh, still would not be um, uh, exceedingly expensive. So that is something that can be done. So the effect, uh, in this range uh, of the uh, Van der Waals interaction could be learned and uh, effect uh, beyond that, uh, that would be much weaker, could be uh, included uh, like we include the long range electrostatic interaction uh, in the case of the Ewald summation. So there are possibilities uh, and uh, 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 we are not uh, involved uh, in that uh, concerning Van der Waals, yeah. but I'm quite sure that there are people 
around in the world who are working at that uh, right now. Okay, I think uh, it's, it's painful uh, to cut uh, such a lively uh, discussion, but I think uh, it is high time uh, uh, to, uh, to close uh, this, uh, 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 this afternoon's uh, session. I would like uh, to thank uh, uh, Roberta again and uh, all the participants uh, to stay with, uh, uh, to st uh, for having stayed uh, with us uh, uh, thus far. Thank you very much to all. And uh, uh, for the participants, uh, we reconvene uh, tomorrow morning, uh, uh, European time. Uh, with Roberto, I wish uh, we will soon uh, meet in person. Thank you very much again. Have a nice day or night or whatever it is at your Thank place. You. Thank you. Thank you, Roberto. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye, Roberto. Bye. 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 Let's see now. Stop share.